Weird Science. It's the revolution. Batman Offworld number two. I was going to have a song for it, Eric. I didn't have enough time. I had to go to that pesky wedding. And it's oh written by God. Jason Aaron, pencils by Doug Mankey, inks by Jaime Mendoza, colors by David Barone and Troy Petiri on letters. And we continue Batman training in space. I was hoping, and you do get it here, you get a very Guardians of the Galaxy feel. Unfortunately, by the end, that might be broken up, though I do think that we'll still see Ioni. But I think, I think the breakout character of Punchbot might be done, and that's very that's much the worst. a shame. It's the I worst. I love Punchbot so much. I want him to be this weird thing like the 11th Doctor had in this final incarnate, like the final episode where he had this Cyberman head handles that he loved. It was his only companion at the end there who talked to him until he was just eventually too old and to shut down. I want Punchbot to be there in the freaking like back cave when he gets back up. He's able oh, to help train so him to do different things and the Robins, anybody in the back family. And he's just so ha- like, for some reason, I want this to be this weird back cave thing that like shows up like Harold all night out of nowhere just punch by i was actually reading a christmas uh story from i think it was the 70s and harold was in it and i i thought of you because you always get a kick out of him so when you get punch butt though it was the 80s and i'm trying to think i think it was the 80s when harold first showed up yeah so whenever it was it was one of these older issues but it was kind of cool he's just down tinkering around oh, yeah. and stuff, what you know does. like he does but punch butt it's one of those things where the character is like you had a breakout character and i don't know that jason Ern quite realized that because obviously issues are done ahead of time oh i hope he comes back and if he does come back it could be like battle angel alita where you have the ship and they just dump their garbage and then the punch butt just goes and falls on whatever fucking planet the batman's in and i don't care i'll make it work i'm here for it too yeah i get it i also like ioni and when you get into this, what you get, and what I think that y- you have to the realize... The Tamaranian Storm Chaser? I'm attached to these characters. If you do some character work and, you know, do it in a way that doesn't feel totally forced, I like it. But what I do like in this is Jason Aaron has a wacky story. And I'll tell you later, I'll say it's more Star Wars than Star Trek. This isn't hard science. This is adventure. But when you're doing this and you don't forget to play the idea of how Batman ends up becoming, as you said in the last review when we were talking about it, the way of Batman being this urban legend. Well, now uh-huh. it's a galactic legend because as he starts Agreed. to do things and then people start whispering, that's the Batman. Oh, my God. What's up with this Batman? And I even like the little hyphen in there, too, when they say the Batman and I like it. Like 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 the classic the Batman yeah. stuff. It's really cool because I even the idea where we jump into this whole thing after Batman's been training with Punchbot for a long time now, and even Ioni, where he is doing this thing where he has to unclog the storm shield that happens all the time. It's something that these these uh, aliens really look forward to because when they send their slaves in there to do this, somebody always dies. It's almost like a form of entertainment. But Batman has been down there five times. He still hasn't died yet. Nobody ever comes back more than once, it seems like. And this one person is about to die, and Batman does the impossible and saves him to the point where this guard is like the hell you do it he was supposed to die and batman shows what he's been learning from punchbot and ioni and takes this guy down where he becomes the whispered all to all these alien slaves like the batman the batman when you go and the way that the progression is is this guy comes it's like you are the worst like you, you are the worst person to let people die. everybody has to die we do this and then you go and see the training which also includes ioni but it ends up being the idea of yeah, you can punch punch about all you want, but really what the play here is, and you do need Ioni to tell him this, they are very vain with their, their tusks, their, tusks. their teeth, right? They're going to underbite. Yeah, and you go back to the deal, and Batman goes right for the t- And I love the idea, and if this was ever animated or anything, he's like, oh, God, I lost my – hey, everybody, time out. I got to find the tusk. <laughs> and then but also that play of punch bot being to like Batman – like. Oh, you're the worst. Punchbot says, you are not killing me. You're the worst. But I don't kill. I don't understand your does language. Not must be <laughs> off. Like, it does not compute. He's like, no, no, no. I just want to incubate. And that is something Punchbot cannot figure out. But also, as another layer of it that I really like is by the end of the issue, all these guys that he's, he is, Batman's saving too many people. They have too many people at the end when they say, we got to thin the herd. It's because Batman is saving everybody and they're not dying when they're supposed to. So they're going to do the spacewalk and then they have to go and, and kick things into high gear. But even so, when you have P- Punchbot is great. And sure I is. like I like Ioni, too, when she comes I in. I don't she's like Ioni drinking. as much as Punchbot, but I still enjoy her. Like She hasn't captured my heart yet like a Punchbot has in two issues somehow. And Punchbot is, you know, he's the Robin. He's there to be the sidekick here at the Ioni is the play. I like her, though, because 
she ends up like she's everything's a contest and she's even saying like oh man it took four guys to bring you in took five to bring like she's always bragging about that but she's got to win on somebody and then you also see and they again it's not overplayed a subtle deal Batman knows a little more about Ian because he is a detective. He actually has figured out and heard and seen things where you try to put up this sort of like brave bravado of being cold and calculating stuff like that. But you also, you know, steal food to give it to the weaker members of the slave trade. Yep, and and that right there, without anything, will make her a little Shut more endearing. Yeah, and she doesn't like it. And the whole play is she's been doing this stuff with this wine, you know, this whole deal. And she even wants Batman to drink with her, and he's like, "I don't, I drink, don't but drink." Where do you come from? I, I, I love that. And like, next thing you're going to tell me that you don't use guns. And he just like looks at her. It's like funny. But she's been using this deal with pretty much prison wine to kind of grease the wheels a bit for when she does go to escape. She's going to have this way to do it and whatnot. But she also recognizes that she's kind of going to need Batman. Like Batman is a ticket out or at least, you know, something that would help. Well, I'm telling you, with all this stuff that he's been learning from Punchbot, it almost becomes Rorschach in prison where I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me when he starts taking on the guards. You just think he's this weak little earthling that they don't understand. He's just weaker than everybody else. And he just starts taking them all out. Nobody understands this. Oh, yeah. And and still stressing the idea that Ione thinks, oh, you have somebody you love back on your home planet. This is what drives you. Love gets you killed. <laughs> My city. Uh, even at the one point when... You end up, hey, you're going to fight me. Ioni says, come on, fight me. And it, right away, Batman's like, hey, that punch bat, how do you fight a Temerine? She's no, like, no, 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 no punch bat. And slaps punch bat, who goes from just a second ago saying, I don't like you. Thank you, mistress. I think I like you now. It's so good. Punch bat just standing in the background listening at that one. <laughs> it just cracks me up. That's why I want him to continue. But yeah, they end up. And I'm glad it's not one of those things there where they start kiss fighting. You know what I'm saying, Eric, when you smooch fight, like you punch no. and then smooch, and then you punch again and you smooch. I didn't need Switch that. You in the winter house get it. Yeah, it's a punch fight. It's a kiss fight. Uh, but even then, I love also because she is Tamaranian, but she's a little rough around the edges. And she explains, like, listen, I'm from Tamaran. I don't think you know the planet. Like, everything smells great there. Everybody's oh, yeah. always hugging you. Looks great. Smells great. Freaking it everybody sucked. wants to touch you. I'm out of here. so good. She's like, I did not want any parts of that. She's goth tabaradia. <laughs> I like that. I, I thought it was really cool. Like, she's there just being a hard she's got ass. She's face tattoos. Obviously, she's a goth tabaradia. And then, yeah, when she, she even says, hey, you don't drink, you probably don't, you know, what about guns? And he says, no. And she's like, oh, you sure picked the wrong galaxy to do this shit in. But this is what he wanted to do. And, you know, we're in this, we're in the second issue. He does end up coming up against Captain Sin, the big thing that he was, and he's not ready. And I, I'm like, okay, that that pushes things. We we obviously know that he's not going to get back right away, but I like that he's not exactly, you know, the back god until he gets ejected in the space. But he's there, and at one point, he's, he's just, just the getting start the, of the yeah, back god. He's just getting the crap kicked out of him, and all this, and that's when you end up having. I only tell the story, and and it's good. Yeah, man, I was out there. I was a storm chaser. I captured people that paid me money to pick up people. And then the thing is, on this long ride back to where I read to drop this dude off, he would not shut up. He just kept talking. And then eventually, we started locking lips because I liked the shit he was saying. And after that, I dropped his ass off. He got killed. And I thought to myself, boy, I really miss his talking. Let me go back. Maybe he didn't get killed. Oh, wait, no, he got killed immediately. I'm sad now. He's dead. And it got killed when he immediately got thrown in those engine deals and got burned up but also i will say at one point she does say yeah i just wanted to shut him up so the best thing was to kiss like i didn't want obviously to kiss him. i just where we kiss fought just like me and you did that man but yeah that's when she even says like oh man i hear three dozen stormers to bring you down took four for me and i i just love that she's keeping track of that oh yeah you the know, one up in this great oh it's so good Oh, the thing is, I don't even think it has to be real. It's just who she is. No matter what, she's going to one-up you. I'm telling you, it's funny because as I'm reading this, this might not uh, you know, ring with you, Eric. Ring a ding ding. But there is a story where Kobe Bryant, which you would know Kobe Bryant, at one point he was telling people, oh, I ended up beating Tracy McGrady one-on-one basketball. Tracy McGrady was like, what the fuck is he talking We never played one-on-one. There was a <laughs> time when they were just shooting together, like just kind of doing some moves Kobe and practicing. Took it seriously? <laughs> yeah, and he said, and Tracy McGrady's like, now I, he was keeping score. Like there was nothing, like it was, a, it was something to him and they were just goofing around. He's like, God darn it. But 
it reminded me of that. But yeah, and one v one me right now, motherfucker. Come on, hit the court. Exactly. But he was like, "Hey, like, let me practice this move on you." <laughs> and he was keeping score. Uh, but when this is going on, and after Ioni tells the story, she also says, "Listen, because there's so many people not dying, they're going to end up." And she says, "Hey, you know, all this going on, there's too many. They're going to thin the herd. There's a spacewalk, and I'm sorry, Batman, but you're not going to live. This is something they just send you out with nothing." You end up dying, and he ends up being able to break out. And actually, in a cool using play, that piece of tusk he that he took tusk. off the guard, he unlocks his handcuffs. That poor guard, though he was a piece of crap, he's still looking for that, right? What's he going to do with it? He needs this whole thing. Is he just going to glue it back in place? Probably. I I don't I don't know what space dentists they have. Well, what are they called? Are they called Arcanians? What, like what are the race? I, I can't remember the race. But the thing is, like, do they have a really good dental plan in the Slag Galaxy? There's the Branks. We get to the Branks. The, I think they're calling, they're the Branks, and they kind of go with his name being Branks, I guess as well. But I don't, I, I don't know if Captain Sin, if he actually has like a dental plan in here. Maybe they do. You know, he's in charge. Uh, I like it though when he ends up like, gotta keep my war stormers happy with a good dental plan. Dental Definitely plan. great benefits on this in the Seriously, Slag Galaxy. In the Slag Galaxy, you like the Slag, Eric. Uh, but there's a prison break. Then they realize we have to do it now, or, or we're gonna die, or at least Batman will. Uh, and so they start the prison break, and you have this going on, and it's so funny because it is kind of impromptu, but because Batman, not as prepared as, but still prepared, like things are in motion, and you end up where I am, he's like, well, we can't really get out of here, we gotta get the storm, because they are surrounded by the storm, this whole, you know, galactic tornado type deal, and Batman's like, no, 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 I got, I got that taken care of, and it's so good, where all of a sudden you see Punch Bot. Show up on the main deck. An artificial intelligence robot that just knows how to take punches and like be a training butt. Showing up on the main deck with these people that are like these little slug fatso kind of thing, like hover chairs that are, or who are plugged into the ship who control everything. They're the weathermen. Greetings, weathermen. I have been sent to service the er, er, storm circuits. Like, you just see this. It's so funny how, like, you know, how nervous he is. It's just funny for the character, like, just to be nervous to go against him. Then he just goes and punches one out before the other one shoots him to death. But, like, not to death, but, like, it looks like he's to death at that point. Where he eventually is able to take things down and keep them down once he hooks himself up to the main circuit board or just board in general to make sure that Batman and Ioni can make their escape. And he's left behind. I'm like, come on, punch bot. Don't do it. Please. So say we can have you back, baby. And in in this, while Batman was still like he was still training before, and it kind of plays in the Ioni bit because when he's talking about I kidney punch a Gordarian in his upper thigh, and then I hit this guy, and he goes down like I hit Geography. him in the balls because it was southeast. <laughs> I love when you have Ioni where she shoots a guy right in the face, and Batman goes, "Whoa! I thought Whoa. we said not no killing," and she goes, "Relax." Shooting that guy in the face is it really shooting? Or maybe it is. He'll be <laughs> like, fine. On, like, he'll be he'll be fine. He didn't really get shot. But when you have Punchbot just nervously go in, it does play off that play of everybody took Punchbot for granted. Only thought he could do one thing. He's doing it. He's in there. He's so nervous. And then when you think he's going to get out, he gets shot, and Batman's going to go back after him. Batman won't leave without Punchbot. And then I'm like, great. We're going to have the three of these Guardians of the Galaxy. I do like that Ioni stays and these guys, these other prisoners, like we got to get the hell out. This whole, you know, interstellar hurricane deal, that's going to come back. The shielding's going to go up. We're going to miss our opportunity. Eventually she has to go. Eventually she goes and she's like, damn it, Batman, because he runs into sin. And he says, I trained for this. I'm not ready. And he ends up <laughs> not being able to go and get punch spot. So he gets ejected out in the space. But that's the last thing punch Bot does. Punch Bot sees this and is able to Launch send an escape pod out and escape he intercepts pod. Batman who's in space and he's able to grab a hold of that and hopefully put his ass into the cockpit before he you know succumbs to space which he does but he's he back gods the shit out of it by doing that I can't see how it works but it works and the only thing that saves it is that when you see where he landed you have the cockpit open because he got into it but it works it's it's very you know you have to suspend disbelief but at this point i said this is more star wars than star trek to me it's adventure and you have some fun with it it's back god anyway even though he's not quite there but in this point he is but really the play is if you end up loving punchbot you got to go with this because punchbot ended up doing it and then his last thing is thank you batman for teaching punchbot 
how to, to punch, punch back. back. And then he kind of like, <laughs> oh, so that's good. so good. And I'm telling you, it's so stupid how good that is. It's so good. And it's so, it is, it's so stupid that I, I ended up where, how am I getting so much feels from Punch Man? Even feels so of like, He's oh, my Punch best Man, friend. Jump into space. You can do it, Punch Man. You can catch up. I'm telling I you, really I love the idea where they get rid of their garbage and Punch Man's part of it and just kind of falls down into this planet or whatever. I need it so bad. Because where Batman does find himself, he ends up in this mining like um, planet where they're being devoured. These like slave miners being devoured by these barbed wolves of the caves that Batman is then going to go after the Alpha Wolfman alien thing of this planet and take it on here to save the people of this mining colony. And it's one of those where when they go down, these people are like, oh, man, you're here. This is a desolate planet. Nobody has any sort of hope or great. Uh, and he's like, boy, I feel like home. And then he goes after space these, Gotham. <laughs> these mining <laughs> werewolf space things. And he's going to fight him. So I have to the see barbed wolves. how that is. But he looks very horrific at the one point when he's like, the sea stands here. And then he's right up. I'm like, oh, shit, this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, again. You have a moment where a lot of people ended up, oh, man, it's so ridiculous. It threw me out. I recognize that. When I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, but. But it's fun didn't as Didn't ruin hell. anything for me. I think this is. And it is sci-fi goodness. It is. And when you're doing it, you know, we've, we've read Batman versus Predator and Batman versus this and all that. That doesn't play out as good as this in my mind because this also has that essence of Batman learning to be batman to other people and like i said when they start whispering about batman i think that was like a well, great was it, moment was it in bendis's run where we had the whole deal where they kept talking about how everybody knows the s in space superman has inspired all of these people like the, everybody recognizes the chess crest and i was thinking about fuck superman we're gonna have batman symbols everywhere in space he's gonna be the hope of all dis- disembodied people or disembodied like dis- 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 something i can't even think of the word i want but all of these dis- people enchanted. that needed batman disenchanted maybe but no um <laughs> Just the idea that this is going to be like their space Jesus, essentially. The person who came down from the stars and liberated them from their, like, you know, captors. At devours. the end of this, I would not bat an eye if you just had some alien mom and dad telling the story of the Batman to a little baby, like a little kid who's like, oh my, is it real? Nobody knows. Or something like that would be really, really cool. Because I, it's funny you said that because I did think of that and where Bendis also played the idea of that symbol didn't really play off well for people. It wasn't like everybody loved the symbol either and he kind of had that play. Remember you had that bar where John That's what I was thinking of, yeah. and, and uh, Jarrell end up and they kind of like, hey, what do you think you're doing here, kid? And stuff like that. And they just meant that he wasn't the proper age to drink. And so what John said is. Hey, Grandpa, can you take me to a volcano? Let me stay in there in this weird time deal, and then we can come we back and I'll be of that. age. And then, because I drinking age 17, I'll be in. That's all it was. Now we know. John just wanted to be able to drink at that He's bar. got his they fake ID, because the thing is, he went back at 17. It's still 21 in space, but he has his freaking you, you you think fake it would ID be of Finn Connors. Space? <laughs> Finn Connors. 21 year old college student <laughs> Finn is, Connors. He's drunk as shit with the Finn Connors idea. Next thing you know, he goes to college two minutes and it's gone. He just picks up that stupid Jeep and flies away. Why did he do that? It was so weird. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I still want to see John in college, but he just completely gave up on it. We never saw it again. Ben Connors. What would you give this? I had a good time with this issue. Like, the thing is, I think the art could be a little bit crisper. It's like a little scratchy here and there, not exactly something I love, but I still enjoy it for the way it's telling this gritty outer space, you know, like, you know, style, like, along the lines of Firefly or Star Wars. I think it works in it. I just find Fire myself really a good play too. Yeah, loving the that. idea of these characters and just even though I, the timeline's so wonky for me with Batman Year Two essentially going into space and doing this, I still having a good time and I look forward to this now. And I'm like, you know, I can't wait for the next issue to come out. So give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, I'm a nine. I really liked it. I again, maybe if you didn't have that wacky grab onto the deal, Princess Leia moment. I'd say he grabs on there. Maybe it'd even be higher, but I really, really like it. Hey, all you weirdos, if you like comic book shows, podcasts, videos, please check the description of this video where you can see links to all of our podcast shows, websites, all of that. And if you want to help us out for everything that we do, you can click on that Patreon link in the upper left-hand corner and check out our Patreon where you can go right now and get a seven-day free trial to see all the stuff that we do, shows that are Marvel, DC, indie, manga, and even more. So check all that out, and I'll talk to you all later. Weird Science is the revolution.